Thanks to Pioneer for sponsoring today's video. Hi everyone, welcome to my workshop. I'm in the process of turning this tough shed into my dream workshop, but we are in the heat of summer down here in Florida and we need to get AC in here ASAP. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to install a Pioneer mini split. I want to preface this by saying I'm not a licensed electrician or HVAC specialist. My husband and I are installing this ourselves for the first time. So this video is based off how to install a mini split from a DIYer perspective. I actually have two different units here. This one that we installed in the workshop is part of Pioneer's Diamante series, but Pioneer was great enough to sponsor this video and send us an upgraded model, which is the Pioneer Quantum Series Inverter Plus, and I recommend this model over the one we installed. It's very similar in price. Installation instructions are basically the same, but this one has more features, which I will go over shortly. We are converting our garage later this year, so we plan to install this unit in the converted garage space coming up. The Pioneer Quantum Series Inverter Plus that I'm unboxing here has some great features. One being high energy efficiency. This unit has an eco mode, inverter tech, energy star certification, and a follow me mode where there is a temperature sensor built in the remote control. Next is durable performance. This model has auto reverse dust cleaning for the outdoor unit, insect and rodent prevention, and auto heating for cold weather. Last, Pioneer offers a DIY friendly warranty policy. They offer for a generous parts and compressor warranty for up to five years. To sum it up, this product's main advantages lie in its high durability, excellent energy efficiency, and cost effectiveness, which can lead to considerable savings. You can find links to this unit and the tools that we used in the description below. There are a few specialty tools that you will need, so be sure to check out these tools prior to starting. Before we begin, I want to touch on the very first step, which is electrical. We sent the unit specifications to our electrician and he pre-wired everything for us. Let's install this mini split. We are starting with the indoor unit. On the back of the indoor unit, you'll find the mounting plate, which you'll want to remove. We planned the location of this unit before hanging drywall, so we were able to add some blocking for the mini split. With this blocking in place, we were able to secure the mounting plate right into the blocking. If you don't have any blocking, drywall anchors are provided. Be sure to take into account the minimum clearance requirements found in your instruction manual. Secure the bracket nice and level. With your mounting plate secured, the next step is drilling a hole for the connective piping. We are positioning the outdoor unit directly below the indoor unit, so we decided to drill the hole in the bottom right corner if you're looking at the front of the unit, which is one of the suggested locations. The piping can also exit from behind the unit on the left side. If you have something hindering either of these positions for the hole, you can drill a hole on the outside of the unit on the left or right side by removing the left slash right plastic knockout panels. Place the indoor unit on the bracket and trace out the corner of the unit nearest where the hole will be drilled, in our case the bottom right corner. This is to verify the location of the hole that you will be drilling. We used a two and a half inch hole saw bit to drill the hole. Ensure the hole is angled downwards to the exterior to allow for proper drainage. We started the hole on the interior of the shed and then drilled all the way through from the exterior. Next, we prepared the copper lines. We carefully bent and formed the lines so they'll be able to go out the hole that we drilled. When bending the pipes, be careful not to crimp the lines. Now it's time to make the electrical connections. Make sure to follow the diagram on the front of the unit. You can match number to number or reference the diagram to connect the cables.
You can connect the copper pipes to the indoor unit now, but we found it easier to put the unit on the wall first, then connect the pipes from the outside of the shed. This way we only had to thread about one foot of pipe through the two and a half inch hole rather than 16 feet of pipe. Carefully lift the unit in place and run the pipes, cable and drain hose out through the hole and then push on the lower part of the unit so it clicks into the mounting plate. Before mounting the indoor unit, it's a good idea to wrap the lines with the insulated material provided and tape so they stay in a tight bundle. Next, we prepped the location for the outdoor unit. Be sure to choose an appropriate location following the installation guidelines. We cleared the gravel and leveled the ground so we could set two large pavers down as our base. With the outdoor unit set in place, we uncovered the service ports. We carefully unrolled the copper pipe. It's important to unwind the pipe gently rather than pull from both ends. Once unwound, bring the ends of the copper line and the end of the indoor unit line together. Remove the indoor unit piping cap. You may hear some nitrogen gas escape. Our kit came with a package of flare gaskets and leak sealant. Use the leak sealant on the flares of the piping and attach the flare gasket. Tighten as much as possible by hand. Use the torque guide provided to tighten to specifications. The next step is to flare the pipe ends. The end of our pipes were already flared, but we needed to cut the pipe down to shorten the line. One, to clean up the look on the outside of the shed, and two, to improve the efficiency. It's not recommended to leave extra pipe coiled. For this step, you'll need a copper pipe cutter, flaring tool, reamer, and some sealant. When cutting the copper pipe, be sure not to crimp the tube. Turn the knob on the cutter about a quarter turn every few rotations until the cut is complete. Make sure your cut is at 90 degrees. Use the reamer to clean up any imperfections or burrs that may have appeared during the cutting process. Hold the pipe downward to prevent burrs from falling into the pipe. Next, use the flaring tool. Prior to flaring, it is very important to put the flare nut on the copper pipe and ensure it's on the correct way. With the flare nut on the copper pipe, use the flaring tool as explained in the directions. Ensure the pipe is only out 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch and in the correct size guide. Once all lined up, you can flare the pipe. Proper flaring is essential to achieve an airtight seal. If you flare it too much, you'll bust the flare and not flaring enough won't create a tight seal.
that the pipe flared, it's time to connect the pipes to the outdoor unit. Attach the pipes to the outdoor unit in the same manner as you did to the indoor unit. Include the leak sealant and flare gasket. When connecting pipes, be careful not to use excessive torque or to deform the piping in any way. The next step is to wire up the outdoor unit according to the wiring diagram. Then reattach the electrical service cover.
The next step is air evacuation and bleeding the circuit. To do this, you will need a vacuum pump and manifold gauge, as well as a 5 16 adapter to connect to the outdoor unit. You can find these linked below. Hook up the pump as shown in the video. Connect the blue hose of the manifold gauge to the service port on the outdoor unit's three-way valve using the 5 16 adapter. Connect the yellow hose from the manifold gauge to the vacuum pump. Once hooked up correctly as shown, open the blue valve first, then turn the pump on. you'll see a negative draw on the gauge. Allow this to run for approximately 15 minutes. This should vacuum out the air and hold around negative 30 inches of mercury. After 15 minutes, close the blue valve and turn the pump off. Let's sit for another 15 minutes or so. The needle should not move, meaning there are no leaks. If there is a rise in the system vacuum, it means there is a leak. Refer to the instruction manual for troubleshooting. Next, using a hex wrench on the two-way valve, open the valve and release the gas into the system until your gauge has a positive pressure value above zero. Then close the valve after about five seconds. Watch the pressure gauge for a few minutes to make sure there is no drop in pressure. If there is no drop in pressure, release the rest of the gas into the system by turning the hex wrench a quarter inch clockwise turn at a time until fully open. Next, open the three-way valve until fully open. When opening the valves, turn the wrench until it comes into contact with the stopper. Don't try to force the valve open further. Put the caps back on and tighten using a torque wrench if needed. Now it's time to turn on the electricity and see if our hard work has paid off. The unit is successfully running, so now we can cover these lines. Devin wrapped the lines with the tape provided. To fill the hole, he used some tight foam and he also sealed the hole with an exterior grade sealant. Last, he installed this decorative line cover, which hid everything really nice. You can find this kit linked below. We also wrapped up the cables and stapled them neatly to the shed. The workshop is air conditioned and we learned a new skill. It would have cost us about $900 to have someone install this unit for us, but we were able to successfully do it ourselves. 
Thank you guys for watching. If you're installing your own mini split, good luck. I hope this tutorial helps. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I have tons of great workshop projects coming up, so I'll see you in the next video.